Photographs may now be taken at the direction of the ushers, of the class, that is. Stand and give thanks to the Lord. Please stand. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in thanksgiving. We come in thanksgiving for the life and achievements of these, your children, the class of 2022. Lord, thank you for the hard work and dedication that I've put to bring them this far. Lord, thank you for being with them, for always being by their sides in all that they do. Lord, as they take the next step to their new stations in life, we pray that you will go with them. Lord, that you will protect them and that they will come to you in love and understand your love. Lord, we pray that you will grant them heavenly wisdom and discernment, that they will choose good over evil at all times, that they would love rather than to hate, and that they will choose life over death. Lord, teach them your way. Teach them your way only, O oh Lord. Grant them grace. Lord, we pray for the parents who are here today as well. We pray, we thank you, Lord, for their resources we've had to bring these children to this point. Lord, may you replenish, may you replenish their pockets, may you <clears throat> replenish their love for you. Lord, we pray also for those who have tutored and mentored them through these years. Oh Lord, so many people, so many experiences, so many heroes amongst them. Lord, may you reward them in full measure. We pray also for all, all those who support the school, from the guards of the gates, to the people who serve foods, Malam Garba, Ladi, we pray for them too, O oh Lord. Thank you for their service to us. Lord, as we commence these proceedings, we pray that you will be with us throughout the service, that you'll be with us throughout this whole event. Lord, we pray grace once more upon our children. We pray grace upon all of us. Grace upon grace, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. To the staff, distinguished guests, and my fellow graduates, good morning. As president of the class of 2022, it is my honor to welcome you all to this milestone event in my life and the lives of my classmates. I am so pleased that we can be here in person, something that we cannot take for granted anymore. To my classmates, I offer my sincerest congratulations on your academic successes, and I acknowledge the support that has helped us along the way. To all family and friends here with us, those watching online, and those who are no longer with us, thank you. Thank you for the encouragement you have offered, the support you have provided, and the sacrifices you have made on our behalf. 
My fellow graduates, we are gathered here today to celebrate our great achievement. I stand before you looking back on the memories we've all made together. We have endured a lot, but we have also overcome exceptional uncertainty and obstacles. Together, we have challenged boundaries, broken out of them, and redefined them. High school has been quite the ride. These past four years have involved some of the most memorable and influential moments of our lives. Individually, our experiences are unique, but together we share a common bond as members of the class of 2022. Today is a day to reflect on how we spent our time here and how we impacted the community around us. It is a day to acknowledge and celebrate the great achievements of making it to this threshold in our lives. Some of us have braved great personal challenges and loss, but today is the day to remember these and acknowledge how they shaped us and helped us grow. As I look at you, I see both great accomplishments and hope. I see a student body that has challenged and brought life to this school. I know I will continue to hear of our great achievements as we take the world by storm. Thanks be to God, for he has given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It is my pleasure to welcome you all, students, families, and faculty, to the graduation ceremony for the class of 2022. Morning. I'm here to introduce the scholars of the class of 2022. I would like to just first say that this class has been academically very excellent. I know there is no very excellent, isn't it? We only have excellent, so we can go above that. I have close to 60% of the students in this class who are Hillcrest scholars. A Hillcrest Scholar is a graduating student who has gotten a cumulative grade point average of 3.6 and above. So that is 90% and above. So I'm going to introduce the scholars of this class. Aisha Naomi Abdullahi. Yembe Cecilia Ayabam. Long Wool Gabriel Dakogol. Onahi Ida Michaels. Namfe Kefasla. Sanji Lee, <laughs> Nam Fang Joshua Lohas, <laughs> Bwematai Lili Nankie Oluwa Durotini Mafwei, <laughs> Naomi Viola Machit Minor. Sarah Nambian, Nambian Minor. <laughs> Brian Kenechuku Okeke Mbajiaka. <laughs> David Oluwatoyin Oyebade. <laughs> Daniel Josiah Robinson. Adiola Sontochuku Sanyaolu. <laughs> Nanret Victoria Sariam. <laughs> Bernice Yilyi Sule. <laughs> so I present to all of you the scholars of the class of 2022. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Mao Senayaku. 
and it is an honor to introduce to you one of the class sponsors of the 2022 academic school year. A mentor and role model for us all, and personally for me, as one who is committed and committed to Christ and deeply rooted in his teachings. She's someone who has devoted her life to everyone around her in church, school, community, and environment as a whole. She has been working at Hillcrest School since 2001 till date, and she is a mother of three wonderful kids and a wife also. She has taught Hillcrest School as the Bible teacher, French, and Spanish teacher. It is a tremendous privilege and indeed an honor to have the opportunity to introduce to you Madame Tessie Ononubo. Good morning, all. This sponsor moved to Nigeria in August 2006 and traveled extensively throughout Nigeria, working to develop Bible clubs and train leaders of youth ministries. He has also been involved in rural evangelism and an AIDS awareness drama that have visited hundreds of schools in urban areas. He started at Hillcrest in August of 2019, teaching high school Bible and the shop classes. His life verse is Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand in order that we, walk, we shall walk in them. This verse has kept him moving forward in spite of many difficulties. Both of his adult children graduated from Hillcrest and have gone on to higher education. He is looking forward to spending time with his adult children and granddaughter this coming summer. Please help me welcome Malam Bob Alhaji Duvu, Mr. Reverend Bob Duvu. So we'll be introducing each one of the students and giving you a brief bio of each one of them. We will start with Aisha Abdullahi. Her nickname is Shisha, and she came to Hillcrest in eighth grade. Her fondest memories at Hillcrest include seeing how every individual here seems to remind her of other individuals from other schools. And then again, the episode of getting trapped in the bathroom with Joan, which I don't know the details about that, but I'm sure it's a good story. <laughs> She'd love to be remembered, but not as the candy lady. She has an inquisitive spirit that strives for excellence. Her, she has, um, her future study plans include business and engineering. Aisha's favorite verse is Matthew 7, Chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. But she must not forget the verse that follows. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Thank you. Iembe Ayabam. Fondly called by her friends DJI, Bizel, Oyimbo, Yellow Popo, ETC. Iembe came to Hillcrest in 2009. Some of her fondest memories at Hillcrest are the Stuko Welcome Back 2021 2022, taking selfies on Maddie's phone, Mr. Harris Social Studies class. Beauty and the Beast with Mrs. Cameron, class of 2026, and a bunch of other memories. Iembe wants to be remembered for helping others and always wanting to make people smile. We all attest to this attribute of Iembe. She is always on the look for others' interests. Iembe plans to study law at the University of Leeds or Kent to become an international human rights lawyer and activist. Iembe. So, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Amen. 
Next, I will introduce Stephen Barnhorn. Stephen Nick nicknames are Stevo and Blondie, and he came to Hillcrest in second grade. He has been accepted into Redeemer's University to study kinesiology. The people he will never forget are his classmates of 2022 and some of 2023. The sound crew, Mr. John, Mrs. Hompson, Mr. S, Auntie Vicky, McFortune, and Mr. TJ. His favorite spot on campus is anywhere outside of a classroom. <laughs> if he could create one mandatory class for the future seniors, it would be nap time. <laughs> Yet, the reality is, he is an all-around athlete, a brilliant student, and a young man with an infectious positive attitude. His favorite quote is from Vince Lombardi. Winning isn't everything, but wanting to win is. Stephen, work to maintain your positive attitude, no matter what you face. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of others, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Gabriel Dakogo, also known as Gabes, Gabo, Gabu. Gabriel came to Hillcrest in August 2017. His fondest memory at Hillcrest is playing in the Hillcrest soccer tournament. Gabriel is a hardworking and intelligent student. His classmates claim he feigns confusion only to top the class course. Gabriel would like to be remembered as someone who gives more than 100% in everything he does and passionate about the things he loves. Gabriel plans to major in mechanical engineering. Gabriel, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Deuteronomy 13, verse 8. The next graduate is Bunu Gunwok. His nicknames are Clemsy, Bunzi, Bunu, and he has been here at Hillcrest before but returned this past year for his senior year. His fondest memories of Hillcrests are the times the boys' soccer team won the tournament. He'd love to be remembered for being a, a good sport as well as, as well as having a free and cheerful spirit. Whether he is engaged in class, playing sports, or strolling through the halls, this young man has cemented his presence here among his fellow students, the teachers, and the academic staff. His future plans are to pursue civil engineering at the University of North Texas. Bunu, as you plan to walk in this next phase of life, remember, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills removed, yet God's unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor his covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Isaiah 54.10. Daniel Haman. His friends call him Danny Boy, Danny the Man, Yaron Sarki, Mr. Senator Adamawa. Dan has been in Hillcrest since preschool in 2008. His fondest memory at Hillcrest is driving Mr. Barry and Mr. TJ's cars to the high school square and in front of the canteen on April Fool's Day. Dan wants to be remembered for putting a smile on the face of his friends, his joyful spirit, and his strong belief that Nigeria will be great one day. Dan will attend Oregon State University and plans to study supply chain and logistics. He plans to get a degree and a master's in politics, come back to Nigeria, 
sit in the office of the Senate representing Adamawa North or South. <laughs> And most importantly, make his mom and dad proud. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, Dan, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with a loving eye, with my loving eye on you. Psalm 32, verse 8. <clears throat> Onayahi Ida Michaels. Her nicknames include Onahai and Grace. Her future ambitions involve engineering. She will never forget some of her classmates and teachers and will also be well remembered. There is no better way to describe this young woman than intelligent, ambitious, sports loving, active, and fun. Whether on the field or in the classroom, Onahai does her best to give any task she is given her utmost care. There is really nothing she can't do, and her comedic good nature is contagious. Onaihi, take time to look back occasionally and remember all that God has accomplished in you and through you. And know this, that I am confident that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Philippians 1.6. Nanfe La. Her friends call her Nanfe, Feife, Coconut, Oreos, Yellow Plantain. <laughs> she came to heal Christ in grade two. She said her fondest memory are games days after, uh, during the senior year. I will remember you as an efficient worker who succeeded in leaving her print on every face of her high school life here at Hillcrest. She led her class twice as class president, served as NHS president, played a major role as Abena Badwa, the mother of Anoa, in her class's senior play. And also, as Grace in this year's high school musical, Annie, and took six advanced placement classes, a very capable and conscientious lady who demonstrated leadership qualities beyond her years. As the mother of Anoa, in some senses, she was the mother of her class. You'll be greatly missed. She plans to study architecture in the university. Nan Faith. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Isaiah 30, verse 21. Sanji Lee. His nicknames are Sanjit and Cheese Puffs, and even I am curious about that one. He came to Hillcrust in 2010 and his greatest lesson learned is that ignorance is a plague. But in spite of that lesson, he always has a smile on his face and usually a computer in his hand. Sanji is a genius and yet maintains the wonder and curiosity of a small child. He is equally capable of besting anyone in a match of wits alongside with his leadership qualities that have allowed him to lead a numerous, uh, numerous Stuco events. He has also found our, founded our school's first computer science club. His future plans include the University of Illinois studying computer science and hopes to travel the world. Sanji, as you continue to grow in knowledge and wisdom, remember, the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Sanji, may you rise a harvest of righteousness. Amen. James 3, 17 and 18. 
Nan Fuang Lahas. Nan Ted Paddington. Nan has been in Hillcrest since 2009. Nan is an intelligent young man who achieves excellent results effortlessly. He is always engaged in intellectual de debates with both teachers and students. You would find Nan on the campus lifting weights for hours at a time in the gym. No wonder he's the go-to person members of his class approach when heavy items need to be lifted. <laughs> Nafuan gave his best to his classmates, to his teachers, to the sound team, and to NHS where he served. His, plans, his plan is to study animal behavior and conservation at the University of Wolverhampton. Nan, take the light in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37, verse 4. Matai Mafuye. Her nicknames are Baby T or T Baby, and she came to Hillcrest in second grade. Grace, beauty, and intelligence is all wrapped up in one very entertaining package. Matai, as she is commonly called, is a force to be reckoned with. She is the only person in the senior class who fought, voluntarily took an AP biology test even though she wasn't in the class. She can be seen laughing at her own jokes and dancing to her own tune. She would like to, remember, to be remembered by her friends by those fondest memories of her. Her future plans are to study pharmaceutical and cosmetic sciences at De Montfort University. Matai, as you continue to grow in compassion and kindness towards others that you already abound in, because God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 and 8. Jesse Mbaya. Also known by his classmates as Tyson, Daddy Jess, Babanyaro, terrorist. <laughs> Jesse came to Hillcrest in ninth grade. He won many dancing competitions for his class during Stuko events. His fondest memories at Hillcrest are playing table tennis during study halls, playing, um, planning class events with his classmates. He would like to be remembered for his friendliness, humility, cooperation, diligence, and competitive nature. Jesse plans to go to Rochester Institute of Technology, New York, to pursue a career in game design and development. Jesse, for I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your hand, of your right hand, and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Isaiah 41, verse 13. Naomi Minor. Naomi's nicknames are Mimi, Omelette, and Brittany. She came to Hillcrest in fifth grade. One of her fondest memories is the game week with her fellow seniors this past year in semester two. Although she is perceived as a quiet person at times, those who really know Naomi know that she is a no-nonsense woman and doesn't shy away from any responsibility, although not one to let her values be swayed. Naomi is open to hearing other people's points of view, and outside of this, she is an aspiring linguist with plans to, that include Dumontford University. Her favorite quote is, I have no special talent, I am only passionately curious. Naomi, you are multi-talented. You are a young woman, and may you always know the peace Christ committed to leave for us. 
because he says, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. Sarah Mina. Her friends call her Ra, Rara, Ara, Sarah. Sarah came to Hillcrest in 2014 in fifth grade. Her fondest memories at Hillcrest are the geometry class, playing any card or board game with her friends. Sarah is well known for her uncanny ability to eat, sleep, and read all at the same time. <laughs> she won this year's Senior English Award. She's planning to study biomedical science in the UK. Sarah, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9. Danielle Oglegba. Her nicknames are Dan Dan, D, and she started her academic career here at Hillcrest in kindergarten. Her fondest memories at Hillcrest include recess in elementary school and love and would love to be remembered as having a creative and brave spirit, which if you know her, that will not be a difficult thing to do. Danielle is an artist through and through. Her colorful energy is enough to pull anyone in, and ex it exposes the most gentle heart with a complicated and intelligent mind. She embodies the word unparalleled. Her future plans include the study of fine arts at the University of Bournemouth. Danielle, may you never tire of doing good. For at the proper time, you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. Therefore, as you have opportunity, and all of us, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Galatians 6, 9, and 10. Brian OKK Bajiaka also known as Sweet Boy, BB, Notorious. Brian came to Hillcrest School in 2008. He remembers his senior year soccer season as his fondest memory at Hillcrest. Brian is a calm, easygoing individual. Brian will be attending University of Calgary and plans to study renewable energy engineering. Brian, keep this book of law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Joshua 1, 8. Okay, Osei, Osewa. His nickname is Dons, and he came to Hillcrest in second grade. One of his fondest memories at Hillcrest is his 10th grade soccer tournament. He would like to be remembered for having a lot of hair and for being a footballer. If you ask around for somebody that is very talented in video games, you would probably hear Oge's name. He is a very, he is a very passionate person and loves anime and reading manga comic books. He loves to share and he's very kind. The greatest lesson he has learned at Hillcrest is you should do your homework. <laughs> His future plans including, include studying graphic design in Ger Germany. Okay, as you move forward, may our God, uh, may our good Lord continue to teach you to number your days aright that you will truly gain a heart of wisdom. Psalms 90 verse 12. David Oyebade, Davido, Uncle D, Mr. Prez, 
All right. So David has been in Hillcrest since kindergarten. He loves to make friends with his. He loves to make friends, and he loves playing sports. David is an active listener with keen intellect and articulate speech. He would love to be remembered for his ambition and his willingness to be a helping hand. He plans to study business administration in the university. David, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Daquo Pam. His nickname are Dax, Baba, and Master. He also started his career here at Hillcrest in kindergarten. His fondest memories also include moving Mr. Barry and Mr. TJ's car on April Fool's Day. We all wondered who moved them. He would love to re be remembered for his kindness, which is easy to do if you really know him. Ask anybody in Hillcrest and they will tell you that Dakwo is one of the best people to have in your life. He was always looking out for others, even people that he does not have a close relationship with. It is rare that you will ever see Dakwo frowning because he always has a smile on his face and he knows how to uplift others by telling them a ridiculous joke or giving them some real and practical advice. His role models are his mom and dad, and his future plans include the study of real estate management at York University in Canada. Dakwo, may you never forget that the kindness you so generously give will be given back to you in a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It will be poured into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Luke. 638. Madison Radcliffe. Everyone calls her Maddie, and she came to Hillcrest in 10th grade. Her fondest memories at Hillcrest School were all the times she played what with her friends, the senior retreat, the senior trip, and the banquet. She would like to be remembered for her craziness and also that it is Maddie, not Madison. Maddie loves to study anthropology and travel all over the world. Maddie, do not fear, for I, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41.10. Daniel Robinson. His nicknames are Dan R. and D. Robs, and he came to Hillcrest in second grade. His fondest memories are just generally having fun with others at various events, and he would like to be remembered for trying to help wherever it was needed. Daniel Robinson is a man of few words, except when you put him on stage in one of the many roles he has had there over the years. You can often find him buried neck deep in a good mystery, which he derives great joy from. Dan is also a foodie at heart and loves to play video games, along with other fast, the other favorite pastimes of sleeping. He plans to take a gap year and study chemical engineering in the UK. Dan, as you move forward into the seemingly unwritten pages of your life, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalms 37, 3 and 4. Adiola Sonyaolu. Also known as Uncho. Uncho E. Deola Deo. Adiola came to Hillcrest School in kindergarten. His fondest memories are competitive football, camp out, grade eight banquet, 
he would like to be remembered as that guy that always had music playing around him. Adiola will attend Valparaiso University in Indiana to study medical, mechanical engineering. Adiola, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Isaiah 40, 31. And then Rhett Sariam. Her nicknames are Rhett and Retty. She came to Hillcrest in 2011. Her fondest memories at Hillcrest include her 10th and 12th grade soccer tournaments, working out, playing games in the canteen with her friends, along with Miss Harmson's class. Not only is she one of the most form formidable defenders in the Hillcrest women's soccer team, she can be found in the canteen matching wits with her classmates in the science lab working on some new exci or exciting experiment. Nanrette is the queen of advice. She is known for her kind yet brutally honest advice on topics ranging from romance to the, met the best Marvel movie. Her future plans include studying to be a clinical pharmacologist at DMU or biochemistry at Kelvin. Nan Rat, as you match wits with the world, remember the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Psalms 84, 11. Bernice Sule, also known as Bernie Van Eyes, nicey, nicey. Um, Bernice came to Hillcrest in second grade. Her fondest memories at Hillcrest are playing card games with her classmates in the canteen during their many study halls this past year. She is adaptable, resilient, and loves to look out for others. As a result of her exemplary character, she received the highest Hillcrest Award, which is the Citizenship Award. She is also the class's valedictorian. Bernice looks forward to working in the STEM and to working in the healthcare. Bernice, the Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Isaiah 58, verse 11. Rachel Yunungo. Her nicknames are Rach, Mama Ray, and Stargirl. She also came to Hillcrest in kindergarten. She would love to be remembered for never giving up when things get tough. Rachel is known for her friendliness and her amazing ability to socialize with anyone and everyone. She is the queen of honesty and keeping it real. She's an avid reader, but she is also a Netflix fanatic and a Tupac superfan. Like Lady Whistledown, and Rachel, I didn't even know who she was, Rachel always seems to know the hottest gossip in Hillcrest, but everyone else doesn't yet know. Rachel is always willing to listen and give an amazing, applicable advice. Fitting within her nature, she would like to study psychology. Her favorite quote is from Tupac, I am not saying that I'm going to change the world, but I guarantee that I will be the spark of the brain that will change the world. Rachel, may you rejoice in the Lord always, and I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but, every, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. John Yaku. Her nicknames are Joanne, Joanna, Dokwase. She joined Hillcrest School in seventh grade in 2016. Her fondest memories at Hillcrest, sports competition with other schools with lots of people in attendance. She would love to be remembered for being herself, being friendly with many students, and putting a smile on people's faces. She plans to study filmmaking and production and media in university. She acted the role of Anoa in her classes play this year. Joan, the Lord is good to those who hope in him, whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. Lamentation 3.25. Miles Yaku. His nicknames are Milestone, Bobo, and Daddy Longlegs. He came to Hillcrest in ninth grade, and his fondest memories at Hillcrest are his senior trip, the senior retreat, track meets, and chilling with his classmates. He would love to be remembered for being a track star and a funny guy, along with be, being remembered for his passion in business, making money, and being a leader. Miles is not one to be afraid and add his input into any conversation. He has a vibrant personality. He's a natural fit into this class of 2022. He shows off his love for Afrobeat by dancing and sometimes singing his heart out to the latest Nigerian songs. His future plans include Calvin University, with a desire to study business and finance or business entrepreneurship. Miles, may you encourage and command those around you to do good, to be rich in good deeds and be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. 1 Timothy 6, 18, and 19. So we present to you today the amazing Hillcrest Class of 2022. Good morning, everyone. My name is Bernice Sule. And as the class of 2022 valedictorian, I have been given the honor of delivering a speech today. If my classmates have learned anything about me at all in the last several years, it's firstly that I hate public speaking. <laughs> and secondly, that I am one of the biggest crybabies that they do. There's a 90% chance that if you walked by the canteen during the last four weeks, you probably witnessed the seniors playing a vicious game of what's, as you've heard from the senior biographies. Maybe you saw Nafe screaming at Sunahi for probably the fifth time in a single round to pick two for looking at her cards. Or maybe it was the sound of hysterical laughter at the fact that the whole group had made Matai pick 50 cards. There was one week where we played Monopoly, another where we played the game of life, and yet another where we played Scrabble. We ended this school year with a thousand piece puzzle. Of all these activities, the puzzle was our most challenging, but we had reason, drive, and the help of each other to complete it, regardless of our very own SHC, 
which stands for Special Haters Club, consisting of Mr. James Antitoin and Mr. Barry. But we finished the puzzle and they cheered us on. We applied this simple logic to complete the puzzle. First, we built the frame of the puzzle because the edge pieces are always the easiest to find. Second, we pieced together the objects because it's easy to tell where the upper half of one window meets the lower half or where one pillar leads into another. What remained the most challenging was putting together the greenery and the sky. Long hours of trial and error were our best bet at finishing the puzzle. Now, I didn't go into this elaborate explanation just to tell you that the seniors did not have any serious work to do, which we did not. Our journey here at Hillcrest has been so much like the puzzle we completed. Our parents set the framework for us to be here. Paying sums of Naira that at a point our infantile minds could not even read out. Having to go to work later than usual because in elementary, children cannot be left unsupervised before school starts at 8.10. They have driven through the wee hours of night to pick us up from school events while terrorism and kidnappings were and are still inherent problems in our society. In my case, people like Mrs. Minor have given me a second home. When both my parents have had to travel out of town. My uncle, Mr. Rabu, has driven with me. every day for the last semester so that I could perfect my driving skills. And there's also Auntie Stella. There's Auntie Stella who took me to a tailor to get my baccalaureate dress made when the first tailor is still holding my dress till today. Parenting has not been the work solely of our own respective parents, but a collaborative effort of our teachers, each other's parents, and many aunties and uncles who fill in the remaining gaps. As I did mention earlier, putting together the buildings and more obvious objects comes easy. Learning memory verses has been one of those things. That's why people like Dako and Rachel and others would show up to Madame's Bible class during junior year, and never having learned the Bible verse, they would sit down for two minutes cram the verse and say it to Madame before the words slipped out of their minds. But not every object is so easy to put together, where, for example, you have multiple buildings with a similar appearance. If you ask this class to list one traumatic experience from their time in Hillcrest, it would likely start from A and end in C, if you know what I mean. Some of you learned quickly what the factors are that can induce hypertension, so you left math class early on. The rest of us who are now mad and maybe slightly hypertensive went on. We complained every day about how Mr. A was forcing us to learn all the trick formulas, things like sine of 60 is equal to 3 over 2, or sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. For those of you who went on to calculus, realize how much time this saved you when you were being asked to compute and simplify de derivatives and integrals. and how you may later get ahead in college because you took calculus now. It matters now that we have the concept and understanding, and not how many retake tests we begged Mr. T to give us that he still refused to give, or how often we complained about Mr. A's class. We learned to form group chats to help each other out, specifically in chemistry and math. We took Mr. S's infamous truck and coal analogy, and we used it not only to construct stellar essays, but also to persuade our teachers to postpone test dates or to give projects instead of a written final exam. The skills and life lessons are things you will leave with and hold forever. And for the final touches, the greenery, the sky, and the final goodbye. To everything that you know and have grown familiar with, that is the hardest part. It is not only an end to all that you have known, but it also marks the beginning of a new commitment. 
For some, that is college. For others, it may be a gap year or your first job. Some of you will go on to be engineers, physicists, pharmacists, and cosmetologists. On the flip side, some of you will become artists, lawyers, and creatives. One day, someone will take down the puzzle we put together. Maybe they already have. But you're all intelligent, compassionate, and beyond capable of putting together a new one. Two heads are better than one. Do not forget the people who completed the puzzle with you. I mean that literally, but also figuratively. Your parents, guardians, and friends. Apply the skills and lessons you have learned here to wherever God will take you. And finally, I will leave a verse with you, which happened to be the school theme in 2011 when I first joined Hillcrest. Philippians 2, 14 to 16 says, Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky, as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. <laughs> Thank you. Good day, everyone. Today is a very special day for us as a class, and I have a very special speaker to introduce to you all. Our speaker is a woman distinguished at her craft, a lawyer with over 30 years of experience, a human rights activist, but most importantly, a lover of God and my mother. It's my great honor to introduce you all to my mother and the speaker for today, Mrs. Kempia Mafier. I think I did it, yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. If it's still morning, if not afternoon. And congratulations, class of 2022. Um, it's a great honor to be here today to give this commencement address. I've held my tissues in case Bernice <laughs> has infected me with her tears. Uh, before we begin, let's just say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this wonderful class of children. We give you glory for how far you've brought them, and Lord, for the wonderful things you'll continue to do in their lives. We ask, Lord, that as we speak from your word today, that you would bring life from your word and be an encouragement to the heart of each of these students, of these graduates, and each of us that hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, so today... I'll be asking a couple of questions, but relax, I'm, I'm not a teacher, and um, there'll be no test or exam, you've had enough of those for a while. I'm just a mom, and we tend to answer the questions we ask anyway. <laughs> so that's what I'll be doing, I'll be asking questions and answering them, and hoping that you'll pay some attention. My first question is, who are you? It's a basic question. You answer it all the time when you fill in forms, introduce yourself to others, and even all those essays you wrote to schools. You usually give your name, and then depending on the context, you can add your age, gender, religion, nationality, if you're Nigerian, definitely your tribe, maybe the school you graduated from, the grade you're in, your height, hopefully not your weight, your hobbies, and every bit of information given is piecing together facts about yourself to help people know who you are. My father, in trying to ensure that I had a sense of identity and heritage, named me Kien Pia and insisted that I use this name 
throughout school. Now, you can imagine as a preschooler trying to spell that nine-letter name. After I, I, I overcame that obstacle, I was the best speller in my class. Or you can imagine introducing yourself as Ken Pia in a boarding school for young ladies in England, which is where I found myself for high school. Different, black, African, short and skinny, with the slight American accent Hillcrest and K.A. had given me, and the unpronounceable name. Being different in a strange place is usually hard initially. But fortunately, when girls stay together for a while, they begin to gripe about pimples, teachers, the food in the cafeteria, and what they do have in common swallows up their differences. On the whole, it was a positive experience. Conversely, when I returned home to attend the University of Joss, the, the reverse happened. Everyone not only looked like me, they actually knew who I was. As soon as I said my surname, they knew either my father, my mother, my uncle, my aunt, or the entire clan. I was introduced to a concept that was new to me then, but is popular on the plateau, cousin brother or cousin sister. <laughs> the reverse will be this, the case for some of you graduates. After being in an environment where everyone knows you, who you are, you're going to places that you'll be surrounded by people who don't know you and may be completely different from you in the way they look or speak, in the values they have. As you try and adjust and fit in, remember who you are and where you come from. It seems simple to answer this question, who are you? And yet the answer is severely under attack. Self-identification is a fad recently. We are being told we can choose to identify ourselves as we please. Age is just a number. Many don't even want to mention or discuss religion. And even whole nationalities are changing identity. And the one we thought was certain from biology, gender, is being questioned. However, the issue of identity has been an age-old game of the enemy. When Satan came to tempt Jesus, two out of three of his temptations were preceded by, if you are the Son of God. Now, the Father had clearly declared to Jesus before witnesses, just 40 days before, you are my beloved Son. But Satan was trying to dislodge Jesus' identity from him. After chipping away at that twice, the devil had the boldness to ask Jesus, turn the tables around and ask Jesus to worship him. And then he, Satan, would give Jesus all the kingdom of the world and its glory. The devil knows that if he succeeds at compromising your identity, then you'll be easy pickings. And so the devil still uses the scheme or the ploy of if you are on us. If you're actually smart, you'd be getting better grades than so-and-so. If you were really beautiful, if you were really beautiful, you'd be getting more likes. If you are so good at this game, you'd have won the game or scored more goals. If you are to belong, you should be doing so-and-so. If you are, if you are. The voice may ring louder in your mind when you're far away from everything that's familiar and from the soothing voices that have reminded you over the years of who you are and how precious you are. One speaker I heard speaking about the temptations pointed out that the devil left out the word beloved when he came to Jesus. And the devil wants you to forget how beloved you are to God, to your family, your friends, and community. The truth is, no matter how far away you are, you are always close to the hearts of those who love you. And whatever temptation you fall into directly impacts on them. My next question is, who do people say you are? Now, you may say it doesn't matter or I don't care, 
But Jesus asked his disciples this question in Matthew 16, 13. So I think it's worth considering. Who do people say I am? The difference between the answer to the first question and the second is that the first are usually a set of facts. The second and the answer to the second questions is about people's perception of you, drawn from their experiences with you, things they've heard about you, and the conclusions that they arrive at. Several people came to the wrong conclusion about Jesus. They thought he was a prophet. John the Baptist, Jeremiah, some prophet. But his inner circle could say of him, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And let me interject at this point that this is a revelation or a realization we all need to come to, knowing Jesus as our savior. Anyhow, who do people say you are? Scripture tells us in 1 Timothy 3, 7 that we ought to have a good reputation. In 1 Corinthians 6, 3, the Apostle Paul said, live in such a way that no one will stumble because of you and no one will find fault with your ministry. In everything we do, we should show we're ministers of God. You need to stand by what you believe in and do what is right. It will earn you praise from some quarters, and you'll be misunderstood by others. Further down in that same chapter, the word says, We serve God whether people honor us or despise us, whether they slander us or praise us. Be prepared that when you stand by what is right, people may not say about you what you want to hear, but don't be discouraged by this. However, your inner circle should know who you are and should be able to say to you, this is who you are or this is what you're becoming. Any person who loves you tells you the truth even when it's not pleasant, or they should. And the Bible says that better the wounds of a friend than the kisses of an enemy. Moving on, the third question is, who does God say you are? Some of you would have known that question was coming. And this is the most crucial. It's not a perception like the, last, um, the answers to the last question. Neither is it a set of facts. Who God says you are is the truth, unchangeable and unchanging. And you can anchor your life on it. When you, the class of 2022, were in elementary school, if my memory serves me well, you sang the popular song by Sinatch. I know who God says I am. I won't continue, I'm not Mrs. DeVu, so let me not um, <laughs> uh, um, pierce your eardrums or anything. So I'll expantiate on the message that you sang so enthusiastically years ago. God's word says in the Gospel of John 1.12 that to all who believed him and received him, he gave power to become the sons of God. As you've done, I believe most of you going through Hillcrest, have believed him and received him. You are a child of God, a dearly beloved child of God. And you know the love your parents have for you. But that doesn't even come close. It's not even an inkling to the love the Father God has for you. As a beloved child of the God of the universe, wherever you find yourself, whether you're blending in or looking different, hold your head high with confidence. Your father is in charge of that space and he is looking out for you. God also says that you are righteous. 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us that, that what Jesus did at Calvary was to take your sin or become sin on the cross and he gave you his righteousness. I don't want you to brush this aside as another one of those you know, spiritual facts that you've known, I want you to embrace it as a truth and experience its reality in your life. Is there any temptation that seems to be your weakness? Whatever it is, whether it's anger, pride, whatever, face that temptation with this truth. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, Kien Pia, you are righteous in Christ. Confront pride, lust, addictions, anger, and say in the face of that thing, 
I am righteous in Christ. Keep believing this truth, confessing it, aligning your life to it, and that truth will overcome whatever it is and become your reality. Another truth is that you are complete in Christ. Whatever you may feel, whenever, wherever you may feel you are weak, the Lord is your strength. Christ is always there with an unlimited supply of wisdom, understanding, direction in every facet of your life. You're a branch that's connected to a vine that supplies you continually all that you need. Don't give room for any void or emptiness. Don't allow any such thing to overwhelm you. You are complete in Christ. These are only three out of many things that God's Word says about you. I hope this encourages you to dig into to Scripture, find out more, and let these truths permeate your being and transform you into all that God says that you are. Finally, who will you choose to be? There are facts about you. Some you can't even change. There are things that people say about you, which you should be conscious of but not discouraged by. And there's what God says about you, which should serve as a means of molding you. However, who you will become depends on what you choose to be. At the age of 14 on a bathroom floor in tears, because I'd heard some upsetting news, I chose to follow Jesus. Not because my mom, dad, teachers, or friends said so. It was my choice. And I've stuck by it ever since. That decision propelled me into walking with God. But what has sustained me are my daily choices to spend time in God's Word, in prayer, to choose the right company, to walk as the Spirit enables me in humility, forgiveness, kindness, and truth. And when I stumble, which I often do, to choose to remember that I am righteous and to return over and over. It's those daily choices that you make that will make you the man or woman you will turn out to be. You can choose to study consistently and di diligently so that you graduate the best that you can be. You can choose to spend time in God's word and prayer and in good company. You can choose to be a good friend by remaining in touch. You can choose to shine as a light in this crooked and perverse generation and stand for truth in a world that pre prefers deception. You can choose to be kind, to forgive, to love, to be patient, to be thankful, to persevere. The choice is up to you. You have all the help and support from God who loves you and has given you his spirit to live in you and guide you and help you. You have parents that have sacrificed so much for you and are praying for you and willing to encourage you. You have a community also praying for you, waiting to hear good reports about the progress you're making. The choice is now up to you. My prayer for each of you is that you define who you are by choosing righteousness and the truth over and over. God bless you, class of 2021. Shall we pray? So, Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Pray that, Lord God, it will bring forth a harvest of righteousness in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Rachel Teve Anongo. <laughs> David Oluwatoyan Oyabade. <laughs> Mbe Cecilia Ayabam.
Bernice Iliar Sule. Brian Kenanchuku Okoke Umbajiaka. Joan Sepe Yaku. Sarah Nanbian Minor. <laughs> Nanfeng Joshua Laga. Jesse Mumbaya. Daniel Josiah Robinson. <laughs> Sanji Lee. Madison Elise Radcliffe. <laughs> Ihotu Kowecho Oreo Olua Oglegba. Nanfei Kafis Lar. <laughs> Waymate Lily Nankiar Oluadura Timi Malfue. Nanra Victoria Serium. <laughs> Naomi Viola Manchet Minor. <laughs> Asiogi Dominic Osawe. Clement Bunu Gomwak. <laughs> Onahi Ida Michaels. It's okay. Adiola Sumnochukwu Seniolu. Longwall Gabriel Dakogo <laughs> Aisha Naomi Abdullahi.
Miles Senayaku. Daniel Mayakonopwa Haman. Thakwo Pam. <laughs> Stephen Paul Barnhorn. Now it gives me great honor to announce that these students have completed all requirements presented by the Hillcrest Board of Governors, and I present to you the graduated class of 2022. Let us please stand. Our Lord and our God, we thank you very much for this day. We thank you for seeing us through this graduation ceremony. As we go out now, Father, we pray that you will take in charge of all that is going to happen outside. We also want to thank you for these graduates as they go. We pray for them. We hand them over you, Lord. Protect them in all that they do. Now may the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord go with you as you start a new aspect in your life. The Lord give you good health and strength in all that you do. The Lord surround you with his angel that will always protect you in times of trouble as you now go to your very institution. May you shine and reflect Christ in your life. May the Lord's favor be with you and give you his unending peace. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can now go in peace and continue to be good ambassadors of Holy Christ and to reflect Christ in your life. Amen. Amen. You can be seated, please.